Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. Uh, this time we're going to continue talking about AR Marshalls and the different settings that you have on Cisco Meraki. And this time we're going to be talking about spoof uh, or a spoofing. So uh, spoofing means that in this case, in the case of Wi-Fi, that you have a um, you are broadcasting an SSID in your network, and then a uh, malicious user. Uh, enabled an access point and it is broadcasting uh, another SSID with the same name as your legit SSID. As you can imagine, this is um, a very uh, low tech type of um, uh, hacking technique, I should say, because you know it doesn't take much to create an SSID with the same name of a legit SSID and entice users to connecting to that rogue or spoofed SSID. Now again, if you are a wireless or a security administrator in a large environment, it's very difficult for you to keep eyes into every single uh, area that of your network. Uh, but if you enable AR Marshall, that's going to help you um, at least identify uh, some of the uh, potential risks that your company or network may be exposed to at any given time. And as you could see here, we have a, um, a we have configured SSIDs, and we call this SSID uh, HQ, and we're broadcasting the SSID. But since we uh, enable and configure AR Marshalls, um, when AR Marshall is doing the scanning, it detected that there is another SSID with the same name as our original and legit SSID. So um, this is a very successful type of attack. You know, like most people, they don't pay much attention to uh, the network they are connecting, and if they are just connecting to any, uh, especially if it is a free network, uh, they even ask less questions when it comes to any type of uh, warnings that may appear on their browser or configuration. And ha hackers can use this type of spoofing techniques to steal um, uh, credentials or to install any type of malware on the computer. So the uh, what, what could happen after a, a user connects to a spoofed SSID is pretty much like l limited to the imaginations of the attacker, right? Because anything could happen after that and they could do anything they want to do. Of course, they may have to overcome other uh, security challenges, but at least they entice the user to reveal the, the username and password or, or to at least connect to their um, spoofed network. So when it comes to Meraki, going back to this, you could see, let me come down here. This is um, the uh, rogue uh, access point that it broadcast in the SSID. As you can see here, uh, this rogue access point created an SSID with the same name of, uh, of the original SSID. But uh, if we go back to um, AR Marshall on the network configuration, you'll see that it has been detected. And there's nothing much you can do once it is detected, uh, meaning that you don't have the option of of um, of containing the SSID the same way that you would be able to contain the SSID um, that is detected in your network. The reason why uh, it cannot be contained is because if you contain the SSID at the uh, at the SSID level, right? Um, you're also going to contain your legit SSID. So you're going to be shooting yourself on the foot in that case. So that's why Cisco Meraki does not uh, does not uh, give you the option to contain the spoof SSIDs, but you can use a lot of information from from this window here. Uh, if you are, again, if you are the wireless or security administrator for your company, one of the things that's going to help you is make sure that you have this option enabled, seen by, and um, you could, you know, like do enable some of those tabs right here 
right on lasting and seen by right so you could do it like enable and disable that so what's going to happen is that the system is going to tell you that uh, this is the a the at uh, the access point that detected this spoofed SSID so in that case you could use that information and identify where that access point is located and kind of have an idea of the uh, receiving signal that uh, the access point is detecting that spoofed SSID and then you have to go there to that location and find the, the SSID and of course the SSID is coming most likely from an access point or maybe it is coming from any other type of device but there are a lot of things you could do once you identify the SSID and you know the genital area where the SSID is located and in those cases you may also want to use some type of um, Wi-Fi scanner or Wi-Fi protocol analyzer and what that's going to show you uh, as you could see here right let me come um, if I if I run a quick scan that's going to identify the um, the SSIDs uh, that I that that it sees on the network and as you could see here I have uh, three SSIDs uh, and you know like one of them is a rogue SSID or, or two of them are a rogue SSID and keep in mind that if you have access points that are dual bands most likely you're going to be they're going to be broadcasting on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band so that's just to give you an idea but in reality the only way for you to contain the uh, spoofed ssid is just to identify them and then start you know like put boots on the ground and start walking around the area of the access point that identified the uh, spoofed ssid and with the right tools, you know, is if you have um, uh, the right tools, you can walk around. In this case, um, you can walk around the um, the perimeter where that SSID has been detected. And maybe if you use, um, you know, let let me open this up here. If you use your uh, Wi-Fi network analyzer, it is gonna guide you or not guide you you can use that information to guide yourself to the uh, rogue or a spoofed ssid based on the signal strength right and then you know as you get closer to the source of the ssid the signal strength is going to be stronger and then you can identify uh, the location of the spoofed ssid uh, it would be great if you could um, do it quicker but you know like if you use many different type of network tools and wi-fi troubleshooting techniques you can identify this uh, rather quickly because then you may be able to see what's connected to the switch and so on and so forth but uh with that being said uh that's something to keep in mind remember that uh, air marshal does not contain spoofed uh ssids uh, that you have to identify them and remove them from the network but at least it is going to show you uh, anything that is suspicious or in your network or something that is trying to impersonate your network to steal information from your users so i hope this helped and we'll talk later in a new video have a great day bye